we're back for another exciting episode of The Spicy Life. I am your relationship expert and magnetic matchmaker, Spicy Mari. And on today's episode, we are doing I'm Not a Bitch, I'm a Boss. Yes. To join me in the G Spot that is Guest Spotlight, I have the beautiful, the lovely Brittany Mendoza. Yes, the crowd goes wild. You guys, Brittany is the CEO of Encore Events, 90210. You got to add that 90210 to it. She wants it to be known um, that she is a phenomenal entrepreneur, but she's going to help us with figuring out today how to balance your professional relationships, right? So uh, to get started, right, I always have a spice breaker to warm you up, okay? Question is, when did you first fall in love with yourself? Hmm. I first fell in love with myself when I just felt like I had many talents and I just appreciated myself for that and just seeing as much as I can do like as a woman honestly all that we do I kind of started to feel fell fall more in love with myself then and like I'm really doing a lot and I'm doing it well <laughs> and I'm getting dressed and I'm still executing so and I'm getting dressed because <laughs> yes. that is an accomplishment especially when you're a mother okay <laughs> I got dressed today okay I want a defining moment so I love that it's like this you know okay I start you know doing boss shit I want a defining moment when you were like I am a badass I'm dope I am running the show what was that moment that you can go back to was it an event was it something with the kids that you were like wow I am freaking incredible it was when I had my twins. Mm. Yeah, for sure. I was like, I'm running my company. I'm about to have twins. <laughs> How am I going to do all this? <laughs> so when I had them, I'm like, okay, there's nothing that I can't handle. For sure. Like, I'm really doing it. And so how does that juggling look? Because you, I'm, I'm still trying to figure it out, okay? Yeah. If, if you guys can hear right now, you might hear the baby in the background. You might have my husband on a business call. Meanwhile, I'm taping and still got clients that like need me. How are you doing the multitasking? Honestly, by the grace of God, truly. <laughs> but really, it's really just, I would say like, it came to a point maybe a couple years ago where it was just so much on my plate. And I was like, you know what? I have to take time for me. Yeah. I have to, you know, take time out for family. I have to take time out for friends. And then I have to make still business a priority because, yeah. you know, that's my baby. That's That will always be one of my babies. So, and then fit everything else into it. Yeah. So really it's just scheduling out, taking that time. I still juggle with those hardships though because it's just sometimes it becomes a lot. Yeah. But for the most part, I've still, I've gotten a better grip on things. What does your time management look like? Like give me a day <laughs> in the life of Brittany. Hmm. A day in the life would be me getting up early, super early, like six o'clock or seven ish and making a couple of emails, mm -hmm. making a, a couple of calls, like maybe to the East Coast if I have events that I need stuff done and some of the vendors on the East Coast. And then it's getting the kids up for school, which they hate sometimes. They <laughs> love school. They just hate getting up early. And I get it. I'm not really a morning person either, but I became a morning person running a business. You're not a morning person at all. I thought it would kick in when the baby got here. Yeah, me too. But I still hate waking <laughs> up in happen. the morning. Yeah. So they, you know, getting them up and that's always like a rush. So making breakfast, mm. then getting in the school, then still juggling with they don't want to wear this. They don't want to wear that. Because you got I, two girls. I have two toddlers. Yes. Five. So I guess no, they're not considered toddlers anymore. And getting them to school. And then I'm on I'm on calls again. Mm. I'm on calls. I'm you know, I'm researching things and I'm talking to, you know, staff or some of the girls that are on my team and just seeing, you know, what the things are that can make the company better. Yeah. I'm always striving for that. I've had instances in the past where, you know, there was maybe certain obstacles that we face and I think now I'm learning it's more about communication we're all different yep. we all come from different households yeah. you know and everybody was raised different so the communication might be different but it's just really opening that conversation yeah to seeing what the issues are and like before the show started you had I think we were talking about ethnicity and we found out we're both Latinas. Yes. yes. <laughs> You're black and Mexican also. Yes, black and okay, Mexican. Okay, you know, it's whoop, extra whoop. love over there. <laughs> um, so uh, your company is multicultural, and then you also have multicultural clients as well. Yes, actually, yes. I mean, my both my mother and father are from L.A., 
my dad mom is from Guadalajara mm. and then my mom's family is from Mississippi and so I've just my side's from Mississippi too that's crazy Wait, we might be related yes. Do you have Ferguson on your side anywhere in the gene pool that's so crazy <laughs> I will find out on that um but pretty much you know my grandma actually all her grandchildren on my Spanish side are mixed with African-American mm. So my family is definitely multicultural. Yeah. We are mixed and mixed with different things. But I just love, you know, setting that tone of just operating and running a business and still being basically minority. Yeah. You know, but I always tell the girls that I work with, we have to, you know, being that we are minority, we have to that much further step up our game and really set excellence. Oh, for sure. Do you feel like the pressure is more on, though, because of that? That, like, you can't take a break or you can't slip up. We can't run, you know, past the time. Like, you, do you feel like you have less leniency because of it? Definitely not. Yeah, I feel like we always have to be on our A game. I, I always feel like that. I... I've always said that. I mean, I'm stepping into, you know, uh, a lane where it's a lot of different cultures. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we are, but we hate to always think that. But, yes, I always. <laughs> I'm I al guilty, y'all. I am the stereotype through and through. <laughs> yeah, I always have to think that because I'm not, you know, blonde hair, blue eyes. I'm, you know, I speak Spanish, but I'm, I'm also, you know, I'm also half black. So I, also, I always think that. So I always just try to present myself as, you know, setting a professional business. I love it. I love it. Yeah. And then you have also two like celebrity clients and high profile clients. So do you feel like they're more demanding than the, you know, client who maybe not as high profile? Talk to me a little bit about that. Honestly, no. I feel that all my clients are a little picky, <laughs> but I'm picky. So they'll all have of to them feel have like if that was me in their shoes, I would be picky as well. So I think it's really what I present and I attract you know, you are what you attract. Yeah. Right? I, I really have a firm believer of that. So I feel like what I set out of like the certain eyes, you know, that see what we are presenting. Those are the eyes that we attract. And they're the people that are, you know, a love detail. Mm -hmm. So I think that it doesn't matter. I haven't seen it in, in, in my um, perspective yeah. on celebrity versus, you know, someone that might not have as much status. Mm -hmm. I see it as just the clients that I attract. I love it. And like, so I throw events for the spicy life, like my relationship consulting firm. I love that. And we'll do speed dating events. We'll do, you know, sip and paints, whatever the occasion may be. We're celebrating love, whether it be for singles or couples. And I find that events are the most challenging for me, right? They're, it's the hardest, uh, just from a, a time consumption to a, you know, a production consumption. Yeah. What do you find is the most challenging for you when it comes to events? Like, and also what makes a good event? So the number one question you ask, what makes a good event? I always tell my clients that it's like 80% decor mm. or 50% roughly. That's what's going to be people are going to see when they enter. Oh my God, this is so beautiful. The this aesthetics. is so nice. But then after it's like, what's the fun? You mm. know, like let's get to the fun. Yeah. So then it's the fun, the the games, the activities, the things that, oh, I've never seen this. Oh my God, girl, I have to <laughs> Instagram this. I've never seen this. Or e even if it's the guys, the guys still like cool things. Yep. You know, they still want to have a good time. So I would say it's 50-50. I wouldn't say it's all decor because you can have a... Things can be beautiful, right? Just like a nice restaurant. Sometimes it's like so beautiful, but the food sucks. Yeah. And then you're like, just take me to my my regular Mastro's yep. that has like, I know I'm going to get a good steak. The steak that I like. Exactly. Yep. yep. The dessert that I want. Exactly. The <laughs> butter cake. So I always say like, make sure that it's a well-balanced event with decor and activities or things that people have never seen before. The wow moment or making sure you have a wow moment. And, and then then, the hard part. And the hard part. What's so the hard part? The hard part is I would say the demands of some of my clients of like making sure things are so perfect to mm -hmm. the point that it's like, even though in my eyes it might be nice, in their eyes it needs to be perfect. Mm -hmm. You know, we all have different perspectives. So I would say that. I would say the other obstacles is some of the vendors, like, you you know, them mm -hmm. being on time yep, yep. or them showing up with the picture that you showed them. You know how they'd be like, you, I got this cake versus this right, cake. Right, what I asked for versus what I got. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, you know, it's that or it's just, um, you know, just pulling it all together under my vision. Like I'll create a deck and then this is what I'll present to the client and then showing them, like you said, what they're actually going to get in person on the day of. Yeah. And 
the scheduling of just making a million calls, you know, when you're pulling everybody together, Mm -hmm. you know, some people are like, Brittany, I try to do this by myself this year, but the next year I'm calling you because there's no way I could do all this. I'm not doing events by myself anymore. Like I learned my lesson. (laughs) I'll be reaching out to you. (laughs) It's a stressful (laughs) environment sometimes. And then when you're done, you have that aha moment. Like Mm -hmm. it's so beautiful. Everybody's having a good time. This is a most, this is a memorable moment. Cause first of all, we make moments happen that people, remember in their life yeah you know their life which is important that has to be gratifying though giving them that experience yes it it, it is definitely gratifying and sometimes I break it down like there's two different moments that people remember you in it's like that moment where they're having their aha Mm -hmm. fun memorable moments or in the hospital because I am a nurse too what oh wait you're multitasking that hardcore oh my gosh yes whoa okay so you're coming home with either like The emotional stress of dealing with patients and then the additional emotional stress sometimes of dealing with clients that you're throwing events for. Yes. How are you juggling both of those? So I'm doing like per DM sometimes where you kind of pick up a shift when you feel like it. And that works better for me because I have clients, I have events and I have kids. Prior to, I was just doing events full time mm-hmm. before COVID hit and they took events away. Mm, that's so, right. Yeah. So that's that's pretty much I'm making the schedule for myself because there's no way that I'd be able to work under somebody else's schedule. Question. So is the nursing, that career uh, fueling the passion, which is the event planning? Like, are you using it as one, uh, a solution to the income and you feel like you like maybe learned your lesson from COVID and you're like, okay, I need to do both so that I don't ever fall flat again. Is that kind of what happened? I I think the nursing has fueled like my delegation skills. Okay. For sure. Because like I said, they're both really intricate, different type of things. Totally can't pair, compare saving someone's life from <laughs> <Right>. event. <laughs> but sometimes it feels that way. The way my clients, it's like, the this act. is the worst, you know, or this is the best. So it it, it does fuel that. And, and really delegating to, you know, as a nurse, there's a lot of delegation that goes into it. There's a lot of critical thinking. Shout out to all my nurses. There's a lot, or doctors. Um, there's a lot, or just healthcare in Anyone general. in the health industry. Yes, there's a lot of critical thinking skills that go into it, a lot of delegation to make things happen for your patient. And I take that, all that I've learned there, and, you know, involve that into my business, taking care of my clients. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of making calls. There's a lot of critical thinking when things go wrong. Yeah. I don't go straight to my clients yeah. when things go wrong. I think of solutions. I come up with a solution. Mm. I at least present that solution. And if it doesn't happen the way it's supposed to, then I say, okay, you know, here's what we're going to do about that. Yeah. Because I'm all about trying my best to have good business. That's so good. But do you want to eventually just do go back to just running the event planning? Or you think you'll always be multitasking like two jobs? I definitely am not going to be multitasking two jobs for long. <laughs> <laughs> I'm coming out with something soon that, Ooh. you know, that's a little different, but it's still within the fields that I'm doing to where I'm not multitasking so much. I love that. I love yeah. that. We can't talk about it yet because what? It's a, it's a secret. It's exclusive. Yeah, it we haven't, haven't, it haven't, haven't launched come out it yet. yet. Yeah, okay. we haven't launched it yet. But I'm definitely working hard on it. I've been working hard for about two years on it. So I'm always just constantly thinking of ideas of, I just know I always knew I would be successful and I always knew I would be running some form of a company. Yeah. I always felt like when I worked for people in college, I was like, this is not for me. Like I just... You, you're, no, it's not for me. You're like, I need to be my own boss. I need to be on my bo- own boss. Exactly. So for today's episode, which is I'm not a bitch, I'm a boss. Um, I think that and I and I understand this as like what I always say I am is like queen alpha, strong energy. I know I'm a lot, but I also I run my own business. Right. And uh, I feel like there's a stigma around uh, women who are in positions of power being bitches when we try to lean into regulation or authority or, you know, just being vocal about what we need. Yeah. Do you experience the same thing? I do. And how do you handle it? I do. I, I definitely experience that. And I feel like to me, I don't know. I, I feel like it's kind of cool to see a woman, you know, be in charge of something and really handle it and look beautiful and 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 just be glammed up and just, you know, fly. Like, that is so cool to me to yes. see another woman doing that. So I really, you know, I, I feel like that's, I, I love it. I'm all for the women empowerment, you know. But also, too, you know, I know that that stigma can kind of translate into relationships and be like, oh, she's too 
you know, she's too much of an alpha for me. Mm -hmm. I think it's really just like where you take it. Like you can be an alpha and, you know, uh, be a boss in your business. And then when you get home, be that, you know, you know, that feminine woman and play that woman role at home. I see nothing wrong with that. It's just when to turn it off. And, you know, so do you know how to pivot? Right. Because I think a lot of the challenge is and a lot of women who I get are they they relate to um, understanding the position of power and high masculine energy. What I teach them is to pivot. What I teach them is how to sit in their feminine so that they can uh, be with strong masculine energy male or even if they need to be with strong feminine energy male he still needs to feel like he's important he still needs to feel like he's running shit right so there is no like time where you really get a break from <laughs> sitting right. in your feminine um do you feel like you've been really good at sitting in your feminine energy when you're not at work I feel like I've learned to in the beginning I was definitely like I could do this all by myself I could do this I could do that and then I learned like wait a minute Like, I definitely need a male role within my life for, you know, for advice, you know, to go to my man and say, hey, what do you think about this? Or what do you think about that? Or what, you know, asking actually for just their, you know, their, what they're thinking, their perspective. Um, So I think that I learned maybe about a couple of years ago, I learned how to do that. I was not always that way. I was definitely the girl that was like, I could do this all by myself. Mm -hmm. I don't need you. But as time gone on and I've became more of a woman into myself yeah. and learning who I am, I feel like now I know to, you know, know that it's okay to to take the back seat when it comes to that that male energy for sure. Um sometimes. What are the benefits that you've learned from that? So like in your in relationship right now. Yes. Shout out to relationships <laughs> and love. Uh what have you learned from the benefits package of sitting in your feminine? I learned that I feel like in relationships, it's a give and take Mm -hmm. for sure. Nothing is going to be perfect, you know, and I learned that by by sitting in sometimes my feminine energy, I don't have to do so much. You know, I can sometimes just take the back seat and just, you know, go get my nails done. Yeah. Go get my hair done, you know, or just you know, just do the womenly things yeah. or, you know, do the things that I need to do around the house or it's okay. You know, I got that. You can, you know, chill for the day or whatever you need to do. Or so I learned that, you know, it's okay. You need that. You yep. need that in order to be a successful business owner, in order to be a great mom. I feel like you need that, that, you know, that feminine energy to just, or just, you know, be feminine at home and yep. do the things you know, that you need to do. I find that I have more like free time and space for creativity. I have more uh, time to, you know, kind of like the self-care things that you were listing off that in addition to um, the brainstorming sessions that I want, or, you know, um, if I, if I don't sometimes feel like doing anything <laughs> right at all because sometimes that's a good feeling too Ooh, right like that. just being able to take a beat and just like i'm just gonna take a nap or mm-hmm. but you get that space when you release the reins right? right when you release control right and it's very hard when you're coming from an environment where you're controlling all day mm-hmm. um and directing and then coming home and then being like okay you now are in the driver's seat right when you right. have to toss that to your man and so i think that um it's sometimes hard, and I'm going to use a word that everybody hates that I use, but I think it's important, submission. It sometimes can be hard to submit and say, yes, and, or you're right, you know, uh, you're right, I'm wrong. <laughs> yeah, that is hard, but I've learned to do that as well. Like, that's so true. I think that is so true. And and I think that, I, I, I think that it is important in a relationship to be submissive a mm-hmm. little bit. And I, I, I'm totally all for that. As a woman, I think that in order to have a balanced household yep. and a man to feel like I'm in position, I do have a boss woman out there killing it. I love that for her. But then when she comes home, she's definitely submissive to me. And the only way to get love from him, the only way to feel cherished, the only way to get your man to sit in his feminine energy because we want softness and love in return, right? Is for us to be in our feminine energy. If we hit him back with the person we've been all day, which is like that strong force, that challenging person, right? He's going to outman us. He's We're never going to outmount him. He's going to hit us with more masculine energy. And so if we want him to soften, we have to be soft. That is so true. Like You hit it's, it. It's girl. When I tell you uh, the other day, I asked my husband for something. He was like, you can do this, you know? And I was like, yeah, I can, but... 
I really don't want my life that complicated. Can you do it instead? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and he was like, you don't want your life complicated? Is that what I'm here for, to uncomplicate your life? I was like, yeah, because I could be by myself if I wanted things stressed out and complicated. And he was like, okay, fine, I'll go do it. But it wasn't really necessarily um, to uncomplicate my life. It was more because the return on his in investment, right, in – doing the things that I'm asking for is more because he doesn't have to hear my mouth. He gets to just relax after he has done what I've asked. Right. So we, it's a win-win. Exactly. <laughs> it's a give and take. I always, oh, it's a give and take. <laughs> like it's you a, said, right? It's a give, <laughs> it's a give and take. It definitely is. So when it comes to your dating life, how are you finding time to enter into relationship and juggle the dating portion? If you're working nursing plus running this event company and your two girls, so I just with events wise and just juggling them all, I just take on I only take on certain things, certain things that are worth my time. They are very impactful events, but I take on, you know, things that are worth my time. And as far as my kids and my relationship goes, I always ha like I say at the at the beginning of the month, OK, what do I have to do? I must make time for these things mm. with my kids my significant other to have a well-balanced life so that everyone has that attention from me. Yep. Um, I do sometimes have, you know, my kids are like, I don't want you to go to work today, but you know, I know that they know. And I teach them affirmations before going to school. Like Beautiful. you will be successful. You will work hard. You will be loyal. You will be a good friend. You will, you know, I, I, I teach them those things so they know. And I, and I show them and I explain to them so they know what I'm doing. It's not just like I'm away from home and yep. they don't know they, they're aware they see they're sometimes they want to be helpful. You know, they're Aww. only five, but you know, I, I want to instill those things in them yeah. because I want them to be better than me. For sure. That's the Just, goal, right? Give them a better life than we had. Um, every parent. Yeah. Yeah. For sure. So a lot of people who are in a, our position of running stuff will begin the dating journey and get pushed back sometimes from men who are like, well, you know, last girl I dated or, you know, maybe they've had bad experiences with bosses and they will start to um, show that they're apprehensive or push back on feeling like you're going to come with too much energy that is intimidating for them. How do you not show intimidation when you're dating as a CEO? How do you make them feel comfortable? How I just be myself. You know, I'm a Sag. I'm outgoing. I like I just I love just doing different things. I love restaurants. I mean, I love shopping. I just I'm just myself. Honestly, I'm not I'm not a type of person that's too much like, oh, no, like that has to be done like this mm -hmm. or this. I'm not like that anyway. I'm very easygoing unless you really you got to do something like disloyal for me to like really <laughs> like not like you right. or just show some type of like energy that's like over the top. Um, so I'm just myself, really. I think that that's really, you know. That's really what has gotten me here in my business, yeah. too, is just being myself. I think that that you can have good work. But if your energy or like you, um, you know, how you come mm -hmm. off, how you communicate with your clients, if they don't like that, even though they're like, Brittany has great work, but her energy sucks. Yeah, they can work. go just to someone else. You For know, sure. I think it's really just me being genuine. I just. I just want because if I'm giving off genuine to my clients or the people that I work with, because um, some of them have become family, some of them have become friends, Aww. you know, and if I'm giving off that, I expect that in return back, you mm. know, that genuineness, like tell me when I need to step something up. Tell me when you don't like something. Tell me the real because yep. I want to give you the real. So but you're also sometimes dealing with clients that. And, and as someone who has thrown events, like we can be brat sometimes, right? Because um, <laughs> we, you know, I, I literally just threw like a crazy ass um, birthday party for my son. Oh, and oh. it was the first time I hired an event planner. And I was like, oh, no, I needed to be like this, this and this. So I know you're dealing with, you know, these extra probably over the top demands. For sure. What is the energy management look like when uh, a client is dissatisfied or disgruntled? How are you bringing them back down? without overstepping or without making them feel small how are you still making them feel big so I just for one um I set boundaries for sure 
again, like you said, there's always obstacles and there's always client with demand. So when something is not maybe exactly to what they feel like their standards are, you know, I double check my order, make sure I was right on my end. Then if it was right on my end, then I explain to them what we're going to do as far as like good business, a refund or whatever the case may be. And like I, like I mentioned before, solutions, like I come up with solutions or, you know, and I teach that to the girls because some some people that you may hire, they they just you would think that common sense or like critical thinking just comes mm-hmm. to everyone, but it doesn't. Yeah, I feel like some people have to like learn that, and it has to be okay. Don't go to the client, stress them out. Come up with if something maybe, for instance, maybe it's a tear in the couch or something. Okay, and let's figure out what we're gonna do. Are we gonna go to Home Goods? Are we gonna get some throws? Are we gonna you know throw a couple pillows on there so you don't see it, and then explain <laughs> to the client after. Just want to let you know there was a tear in the couch, but this is what we did. This we did A, B, C, D yep. and we got, you know, we got to here. You didn't even notice, but we're just still letting you know just so you can be aware. Dang, that's so good. Because it sounds like you're also teaching your staff while you're performing. For like sure. You're putting on the production, but also oh, teaching them this is why we're doing this. I just had a conversation today with one of the girls on like what we can do that that's better. And, you know, I feel like it's always a teaching moment. Yeah. I'm still learning myself. But I'm I'm teaching them what I've learned, you know, that has gotten me here so that we can even be better. Yeah. And I want to be known for that. I want to be known for, you know, that my staff comes in, you know, a certain attire. Mm. That is how when I started my business, I was like and when I started it and, and said 90210, I was like. I was listening to Jay Z song and he was like, "Do you want to encore? Do hey. you want more?" And I was like, "Encore just sounds over the top." It does for I sure. think of Vegas encore? Yep. It just sounds like glamorous lights, and that's what I wanted encore to be known for. And I was like, "You know what? I want all my staff to come tailored like hotel, you know, with their tags that say mm. encore events, staff coordinator." And you know, I just from then on. From then on, I was like, this is a teaching moment every time. This is how we step it up. This is how we step it up. This is how we step it up. And, you know, I still have my obstacles for sure. I'm not perfect. I don't want to set that tone because I know a lot of things is, you know, a lot of people set that tone of like they're perfect. And I'm that's not life. Life is not perfect. Right. And I I also teach my kids that when they cry or they have the temper tantrums, I'm like, you cannot get through life crying about it. You will have crying <laughs> moments unless you're hurt or unless you're happy. But I need you to think about what you're going to do to fix the problem. Yeah. Oh, if you can so fix that it. part. That's so good. You're you like, know? what is the solution here? Because we can cry all day long, but that's not going to get us anywhere. Yeah, I don't want them to be quitters. I really want them to think about, you know, I have a problem. How can I get through that problem? Yeah. You know, and if obviously, God forbid, if it's a health situation or something like that that's a different story but if it's something that you know you spilled milk somewhere or something you know what can I do to fix it okay this is what I'm gonna do you know I'm not gonna cry about it I'm not gonna give up I don't want them to be easily you know give up because that's you know I feel like a lot of the times you know a lot of the kids that are growing up I feel like they give up a little bit easier than than we did yes and you'll also see that though in entrepreneurship that yes. it's like, oh, well, I didn't get the results that I wanted or this is hard. Let me quit. Yeah. Right. And so it's definitely the the perseverance and they need to see that within you. For sure. And you can't quit when it comes to, you know, a big project or something may not be going your way. So you really are setting the example for them. Yeah, I absolutely agree with that. Entrepreneurship is very hard. And I feel like I want to give up every day. Whew. But <laughs> <laughs> I do have kids in a household that, you know, has to keep running and, that's just life, you know? I feel like though with entrepreneurship, you get to a point where you're finding like, okay, I'm good. I want to enjoy this. But then I got to be like on the next thing. What's next, right? Or, it's always like a what's next. And that just may be certain personality types. Uh, sometimes it's great to bask in the glory, but then also start striving, you know, looking towards the next goal. Yeah. As long as you're present to, you know, celebrate. Right. But I really wanted to ask you, though, was about the male female dynamic because you're doing events for males as well. Mm-hmm. Um, and do you have any on your staff? I don't get we were just talking about like that we need males we do have males sometimes servers or bussers but but you're not directly like you you don't have males necessarily employed on a regular basis I don't but your clients are sometimes male for sure what is that dynamic when they have to work with you and you're also a young female how are they treating you is it sometimes like who is this young little 
cute chick trying to tell me like how this needs to be ran. Is there ever a, a, a dynamic where you notice because you're a woman, you're treated somewhat differently? No, honestly, I think it's, you know what? I think because I come in with my folder that says Encore Events, <laughs> like I come in like it's business. It is business and let's get down to it. And I'm setting the tone that I'm professional. Yeah, it's not from some, the jump. It's not some, you know, just I'm giving you I don't have an invoice no I have everything together mm. I'm sending you a deck I'm sending you a sketch and I'm letting you know from my expertise and being just you know good at what I do and, yep. and having studied a lot of it that I know what I'm doing just trust me you know and I but I do let my clients I'm not like a pushy event designer mm -hmm. or you know when we do productions I let my clients I always tell them tell me about you mm. tell me who you are and I know you do that with with relationships. You got to get to yeah. let me know who you are as a person, because then I need to see who I'm going to match you up. Right. Or, get to the good well, stuff. Let me know. Yeah, who you exactly. Are. Mm -hmm. So I need to know who they are as a client. I study them. I study. I, I ask them too. what are your pet peeves? Mm -hmm. Like, what are your pet peeves? Because I need to know that. For sure. I want to make sure that on that on your event day that that's not happening. That's a smart question. That's a you great know? question. That's a great question. I have my clients. Um write those out also and then what does it look like to communicate those right because sometimes we're uncomfortable to tell someone our pet peeves or yeah. even uncomfortable to ask that question so i think that's really good that you yeah. do that because uh, you know what my mom always says a closed mouth don't get fed that so part, if i don't facts. ask you that i'm not gonna know i can't read your mind and you can't be held accountable for something you don't know exactly. because we think like you said earlier uh, everything isn't common sense like no, we need clear communication. For sure. And that's happened to me before uh, doing an event. It was a client who they were like, why isn't the grass covered? But I'm like, I didn't know that you wanted the grass covered. <laughs> I, you know, before when I first started, I used to throw like different things in that yeah. they wouldn't know that they were going to get just like, you know, we had extra here. So I'm just going to throw this in and mm -hmm. just surprise them on the day of. But, you know, when the invoices are line item by line item, right. this is what you're getting. You and know people, what I mean? And, and as we, we will start picking <laughs> off certain things. You may include the grass and we're like, eh, maybe I don't need grass that bad when this is. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. And then you get there and you're like, I should have kept the grass. <laughs> but, For sure. but you know what? I couldn't, I can't read your mind. I need to know what, you know, and I, like you said, I asked that question when we see the venue space, what is it that you really want me to make happen? Mm -hmm. Okay, Brittany, I know I want florals hanging from the ceiling. I know I want candles everywhere. So then I know now that that's something that I'm not taking out of your budget if we have to yeah. come down yeah you know what I mean but do you find that you ever have to be stern with the girls though like you said your staff is for predominantly sure. women um how are you managing your boss energy in those environments where people might go to the bathroom and cry or, yeah. you know, take I, it personal? I've had those moments. Oof. I've had those what moments. What happened? <laughs> Give me a story. I've had those moments where they're like, Brittany's mean or she, Aww. she may be a little rude, but it's not that I explained to them after, you know what? Like I actually had a holiday event and I had someone drinking on the job. It wasn't one of my, it was a staffing agency. Mm -hmm. We hired some, you know, servers and I just explained to him, you know, I have zero tolerance for drinking on the job mm. because we, we have to set a level of excellence, yep. a level of professionalism. You can drink, you can do whatever you want outside of this job. But when you're here, we need to be making sure that the client is happy. So I explain when I, when I step into that mode, mm -hmm. you know, like I said, it's only a few times where I really need to get that <laughs> boss energy Gotta pump chest a little exactly. bit. <laughs> <laughs> to get things done. Cause I'm really a nice person. So they might take it like, oh, Brittany's playing. No, no, no. You know when I'm mm. serious. You know, like when Brittany's serious, you know, like you either did something yeah. or you know that you really need to pump it up. Yeah. Because of the type of clients that I have, it's zero tolerance for mess ups. Mm. Like truly, you know, and and I think that when I think about that, too, actually, I'm just having an aha moment. I'm really like that. Like mm. when it's me planning something or when it's me wanting something perfect for my daughters or for my house or, you know, whatever the case yeah. may be. I'm really like, no, it needs to be like this. And so, you know, stepping into those boundaries with with my girls, it's really just explaining to them, you know, just like if I was talking to my kids, not yelling just having a, a clear yep. concise communication on like why this has to be right yeah and I think now since they've been working with me for so long and seeing they're like oh yeah it's, it's your client yeah Brittany it's the type of clients you have like we know that that's why you are the way you are but I, I've always just had that taking the role I mean high school 
I would take on the role of planning things at like prom where it's like, who does that? <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, I want it to just be fun. I want, you know, our champagne party to be over the top. Like, wait, in high school, <laughs> you were having champagne parties? In high wait, school. The turn you know, up was real at that's 16, 17. Literally. And I was just <laughs> taking on roles that, you know, or just even with my friends, it was just taking on roles like, let me plan the dinner because I don't want it to be boring. You know, that's I want so it to be funny. over the top. Like why it should be like, you know, when you walk into the president's dinner, it should be over the top with florals and butlers and just service and just, I don't know. Oh, I just love that. Girl, I'm gonna have to hit you because <laughs> I always have to have like activities and stuff at my events. And I think that's so important because uh, for my industry, you're dealing with people who sometimes are shy. Sometimes they're introverted. Sometimes yeah. they're extroverted. Sometimes they find someone attractive and they're afraid to speak to them. Or, you know, they have the assumption that, you know, maybe someone's supposed to be pursuing them and they don't have to be vocal about their wants, right? So I always have like spice breakers at my game at my um, game nights or my speed dating events. So there's that ways there's some type of introduction, right? Maybe it's like a cue card or maybe it's like a some type of game that they can play when they first walk mm -hmm. in to automatically open them up. Yes. But like what you're doing is so crucial for people to be able to have better interpersonal relationships. For sure. It sounds like you're creating the energy that you want in the room by what you're preparing for them. Yes, because we don't know we don't only do design like like have you mentioned we definitely like depending on what event it is mm -hmm. say it's we've done events from store launches to just PR branding of boxes of like what that you know what your clients or what your you know um the people that you're sending it to are going to yeah. feel like once they get your box of your product, like that's, that's a moment. Yeah. They, they, you know, there's a lot of products that I'm sure come to people's doors, but it's like, if they're not feeling it, the presentation, the presentation isn't fly. Isn't fly yeah. They're not really going to feel your product or understand its use. Yep. Right. You're spending all this money on, on nice bows, but it's like, <laughs> you have to do things that translate to your clients. Yep. And you know, um, so it's really just studying that and creating, like you said, what are who are the guests you know on the deck what are the who are the guests attending yep what is you know who are they are they doctors are they lawyers are they you know and then bringing that to life on like you know well lawyers and doctors they don't get time off so like what can we do to mm. make sure that they have a good time to make sure that they say this was the best event we ever been yeah. to and who did you hire and some of these people don't get that thoughtfulness in their everyday. Definitely So they not. probably are getting a crazy, you know, memorable experience when they get it from you. Mm -hmm. um, do you find that you are naturally a thoughtful person? Definitely. Definitely. And actually, I get that a lot. My boyfriend's like, you're always so good at that. Like during the holidays, I'm sending our closest family and friends that we like adore or clients like different gifts or just like, oh, what would they like with this? And he's just like, you're just so good at that because he's definitely the opposite. But I like helped him kind of get into that. Like <laughs> we're sending a fruit tray, you know, like to show our appreciation because like it's a lot of like, you know, it's a lot of things that wouldn't we wouldn't be able to do without the people closest to us. Yeah. So let's show them that appreciation. So I definitely think, um, you know, thoughtfulness. I, I, I kind of learned that from my dad, to be mm. honest. So like in, 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 in elementary, I had friends who like maybe didn't have shoes or I was like, Dad, let's just buy shoes for my friends. And he would just do it. And oh, that's so yeah, sweet. So it's 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 really just who I but am. But what's interesting is that you said your partner doesn't like he doesn't think like that right maybe he not doesn't think like your dad as much as and as you as much um how did you influence that thought process right because well, sometimes it's hard when you're in a relationship with someone where you have these amazing gifts and skills and the partner doesn't yeah well he <laughs> he's a giving person he just i guess like it's just certain times uh -huh. of the year i'm just it, i guess it just comes also from being a designer and loving holidays yeah. and just different things it's just like so with that I guess it's just it's just really doing it is really what showed him. And he's mm -hmm. like, you're just good at that. I guess maybe just keeping track of like the holidays. And it just might also to be a man thing. Like, I feel like it's like a womanly thing to like write down all the people we're sending Christmas cards to or, <laughs> write, you know, like they're really not in tune to all that. Yeah, too many men are yeah. planning like photo shoots for the Christmas cards. Exactly. Card that's yeah. like, it's like a woman <laughs> thing. So I feel like that's, it's just the fact that he recognizes that and he appreciates it. Yeah. That my thoughtfulness is like in the right space and he appreciates that. So, but you don't get frustrated as much that he isn't constantly thinking like 
the way that your mm. dad did so much, right? Who was like, who can we give to and what can we do for them? No, not not really. That's Be- really good because most women do. They yeah. want, they expect their partner to mirror their exact no. behavior. Like this would be, this would matter to me. How does this not matter to, to you? you? Yeah. And it's kind of unfair because, mm, well, that ain't who you signed up for. <laughs> right, right. And I've learned that actually. I've learned that like they're not going to be like me. Yeah. Again, we come from two different households. Yep. You know, like I said, he is a giving person, but it's just like, I I guess I'm just for me, I'm just over the top with everything. And that's just like naturally who I am. So, um, you know, it just it's a well balance. It just it's a really, I guess, a good balance. Let me tell you. When you said, like, it's a guy thing, I'm like, okay, I don't want to lump all guys into that category. That's true. However, that's true. It's <laughs> in my experience, and I've dated a lot of men, y'all, <laughs> that is a common occurrence, okay? Literally, my husband, I always call him, like, a brute and caveman, but when I tell you this is, like, the second bouquet that Aww. I've gotten in our so marriage, <laughs> We just celebrated our five year <laughs> wedding anniversary, but he surprised me. I was teaching my class and he walks into the, um, into my, um, uh, purpose made awaits. Make sure you guys register for the new one. Um, your purpose made awaits class. He walks in with the bouquet and I'm like, oh, when I tell you I was so shocked because I haven't gotten flowers in years, but it's not that he isn't a giver, right? It shows up different. So I'm allowed to swipe the Amex and get myself flowers okay. every month for myself, Thank you. which I do. <laughs> but the fact that he went to the store and went and got it, that was like that extra key of thoughtfulness, mm-hmm, for right? For sure. That it's like, okay, it's not, and every month it doesn't, it's not executed the way that I may do it, but when he does show up and he does do it, we are more appreciative. Appreciative, exactly, yeah. exactly. And I've learned to communicate because in my mind, I have this over the top, it's supposed to be like this, but I've learned to be appreciative, like you said, when he is doing something and just, you know, be in that moment, yep. like appreciate that moment. I yep. mean, life is short, you know, it's a lot of things going on right now. And, you know, I just always go back to that moment. Like, I'm just really appreciative that we're healthy, that we're alive, that, you know, I don't have anything truly detrimental and we can fix this. We can work on communication. Oh, okay. That wasn't right. Okay. I'll Mm. explain to you like, this is what I want coming up. Yeah. You know, this is really, this is how I want it. This is who to call, you know, this. So I just, I really think it's communication. Wait, it has to be hard dating you though. And the reason why I say it because. (laughs) If you were an event planner and I wanted to throw an event for you, that would be so hard to try to surprise you because your level of expectation would be immaculate. Meanwhile, I'm like, uh, but I took you to Starbucks. Like, <laughs> uh, so, so you know what I'm saying? Like, it'd be a huge difference. And like, how, so how does he even surprise you or do stuff for you when your level of taste is extreme, you know, and high? You know what? He is really good at that. Mm. He is really good at like restaurants that people like, you know, like that's like hard to get into or like he's just good at. So like I'm good at maybe designing, Uh but he knows what's like hot. He knows what's cool. Oh, he got his ear to the street. Exactly. Like that's him. (laughs) So like he always it's for him. Like when he does things, it's an experience for me. Mm. And I love experience. Right. You create those. So it, 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 it matches. It, it, it goes. That's perfect. That's awesome. Because let me tell you, it I doesn't would be have so to. nervous. I'd be like, is she, is Brittany going to like what I'm no. about to do for her? It doesn't <laughs> have to be. It doesn't have to be that. I think that now I do, I do like, you know, I do like, I do like things. She's but like, I got taste. I, and I it's do expensive. like expensive. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> but I do, I like, it doesn't have to always be that. Yeah. You know, it's just something that you won't forget. That's, that's me. I like to think outside of the box. Mm-hmm. So as long as you're thinking outside the box and it's different, I'm like, okay, that's cool. But I, you probably made him step his game up though, since he's been with you in the creativity. I, I feel so. Yeah, I feel like so. Like last Valentine's, we we tasted a whole bunch of wines, like mm-hmm. different wines in Vegas. And we had this like sectioned off and they came with different desserts that were like curated. So I feel Ooh. so. Yeah. I he's feel- probably always on his toes like, okay, what can I do next? What can I do next? <laughs> yeah. You know, he's he's picky, but I'm also picky. So I think it, it ma- he knows the level. So that's a good match then. <laughs> yeah. He knows the level has to still be there. Yeah. I love that. And I love that you're juggling everything you know across the board I think that that's something that I'm constantly trying to reiterate like how do I do this I got I I gotta just I just gotta do it I gotta get better at this I gotta get better Mm -hmm. at the time management but I love that you're giving me no excuses I'm like you got two jobs girl (laughs) that you're running um so it's and it's probably hard with having to deal with like 
patience, attitude, right? Because their mm-hmm. life is at stake. And then, like you said earlier, clients who you're doing events for feel like their lives are at stake, even though it's just like a birthday party. <laughs> right, but they, they feel like the cake is, <laughs> has fell on the ground. You're right. Yeah, that's how they come. How are you managing your emotions, right? I asked you earlier how you're managing their emotions. How are you managing your emotions in those moments so that you don't curse them out, so that you don't pop yeah. off, so you don't lose your shit? Right, for sure. Because sometimes I do want to lose my shit. Sometimes mm. I do want to lose it. And I do, you know, have those those conversations with myself that's just like, okay, calm down, breathe. I yeah. think really, like I said, taking that time out for myself, getting fly, hanging out with my girls or like planning trips or those type of things really, my me time, mm-hmm. my time to just be me without kids, without the house on my mind, without the job on my mind, yeah. just taking that time out. That's the only way I've learned to really still show up like I am here today yeah. after three events this weekend to really have that 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 attitude that's really me not be you know here exhausted or you know um with an attitude <laughs> <laughs> like why am I here today but no really and just sharing my story that you know you can do it it is hard I'm not gonna say I don't cry I still cry sometimes I'm like this is I'm, I'm like god why did you choose me like why? Well, but, so but you had, that was the first thing that you said, though. When you came, you were like, I just came from three events and like, oh, my gosh. Yeah. But I, what what did we say, though? We were like, I would rather we us have the work busy. and be inundated yeah. than not. Yeah. I know I'm a visionary, so I know where I'm going to be. I've, I've set no nothing less for myself. I know where I'm going to be, you know, ahead. I know my future is bright with prayer, obviously, of course, always yeah. first. And, and hard work, really. I know that I work hard. So I'm like, as long as you work hard and seeing just success, I mean, successful stories. Like, yeah. you know, um, I mean, there's so many successful stories, but just a lot of the women that are just Serena Williams. I mean, just a lot mm-hmm. of the women that you see, even that, I mean, they're, they're, their the movie that they had with their dad inspired me how hard their dad worked and with them and then to see how successful they become like I use those to fuel me Mm. to be you know where I want to be you know and I mean just also seeing my parents work hard Mm -hmm. I mean that that really and you know I've used that to fuel my energy to be where I want to be and then you know like you said I just really schedule the time out to fuel me to where I don't lose it with yeah. my clients or with my kids too. Yeah. Like when you come home after dealing with clients and you're just like, I don't oh, want to be bothered. Drained. Yeah. But, but honestly coming home to my kids though, that's my moment where it's like, that's when I'm like, oh, like I can finally relax. I can be me. I can, you know, hug them. I can run in their room and, you know, play with them for a little bit. I or- think it's like a conscious flip of a switch right sure I think that's something that I've been really practicing is I could come from like a a really heavy uh session with a client or a pair of couples right and those are usually way more intense because you got two energies that you're managing I can only imagine and when we're done I'm like okay this is now Princeton time what does Princeton need in this moment like having to have those conversations you're saying with yourself you have to of like how can I show up for him in this moment my day is not done he doesn't get the worst of me now that everybody's got the best of me he's gonna get the maximum amount of me and I think that's something that you don't realize that you're gonna have to learn to do when you have kids yeah but you do yeah and and I felt I've had those moments where I'm like I have I've had a horrible day today like Mm. I've had things go wrong all day long and how do I not take that energy into my household with my kids and and be like that towards them yeah but I have to realize they didn't do anything they have no idea honestly what life is yet so I have to be you know (laughs) they don't know what responsibility is yet (laughs) they have zero responsibility now I understand my mom was like "Mm, you're gonna want to stay a kid for right as long as you can you know so um I just like you said, translating that energy of like, okay, that flip, like now I'm going into the house, yeah. put on that smile, yep. you know, put on that loving, you know, that loving, caring energy and give it your best and being yeah. a mom. And I, and that's, that's really hard sometimes to, to have those Ooh. flips, but what can we do? We got to do it. <laughs> we got to do it. Cause it's a blessing. We are blessed. So blessed. What is going on Brittany's 2023 vision board? If you had to create one right now, what are we popping on there? So in my vision board is, is I want to take it to the next level. I love doing my events. I love my clients. I want to take it to, you know, curating something with hotels. Mm. I want to take it to, you know, going to Paris and 
doing things International for fashion events. week. Yes. I mean, I've I've already reached taking events to different states, mm. Miami, um, you know, very Vegas, different yeah. different places, but now I'm like if I can handle that, yeah. I know that I can handle Paris, Dubai, you know, different just different places. Yeah. Different Cabo, I'd love to do weddings there. So just, you know, cu- curating events or, you know, working with hotels or working with restaurants to curate an experience. I feel like there is a lot of restaurants where the food is just like mm, it's people subpar. Pay, it's subpar, yeah. you know, and and the experience is just uh, it's okay, but you know, I feel like I feel like there's a market for me to step in there and really, mm. um, you know, curate something. The restaurant in Miami, it was hot for a little while. Sexy Fish. Have you ever been there? No. Is it good? It's actually good. It was actually good. But I love when I walked in there, I was like, oh, my God, like the 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 staff were like it, they look like they had their outfits look like Versace like Ooh. shells all over and then the ambiance was great and then like the drinks were great so I like that's what I want to do here I feel like LA is missing that we need more shows during our meals like I feel like um I like places like La Descarga or I just went to La Mesa the other day okay and so I'm looking for like I want you breathing fire while I'm eating my food right <laughs> I yeah. actually had fire dancers at my wedding. Maybe I'm okay. a thing for fire. Yeah. Um, but like I want some type of entertainment while I'm eating my food. And the food needs to, yes, of course, be good. But like what is the theme? What is the vibe when I walk in? How does it, this place make right. you feel? Right. How does it make you feel? Yeah. And I feel like right now I feel like the like one of the restaurants that everybody always wants to get into is Nobu, which I love. Shout out to Nobu, by the way, in Malibu. I work closely with their events coordinator who's amazing and – but I feel like that's the only place. I feel like mm. there's not really somewhere. That's like where oceanfront, like, right? Well, I'm thinking um, the no, Nobu Malibu, right? Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah, oceanfront. It's oceanfront. So it's just, it's beautiful. The food's awesome. Everything's, it's a vibe there, yeah. you know? But I don't feel like for LA to be LA, like what else do is, we have? What else do we have? So you need to start consulting for restaurants then. Okay, we're putting that on the vision board. Yes, <laughs> hotels. <laughs> we're putting, and it, yeah, and then I'll say Brit, buy Britney Mendoza or buy Encore events it. on the end. I love yes. it. And oh you'll my know gosh, amazing. Nationally. Okay, you need to let everybody know um, either what you have coming up, where they can find you, so that way they can book you if they need you, because I know I'm going to be using you in 2023 because <laughs> I don't want my cortisol levels to continue to go up. Yes. I want less stress, so <laughs> I will be reaching out. <laughs> let everybody know where they can find you. You can find us at Encore Events, and that's E N C O R E E V E N T S 90210 on Instagram and there's a submission link on there. You can fill it out, put your budget and put your vision and one of our coordinators will reach out to you. I love that. I love that there's a budget. Um, <laughs> we always have to know that. We have to be Girl, budget conscious. I will start with the budget and then it's like, okay, but I, you know what? I gotta have the grass. I gotta yeah, have the, uh, I know. The, the, the name brand all over everything. <laughs> I'm so, I start with one and it, it turns out to be a whole nother budget than I thought. <laughs> But I love that. I love that you hold us accountable to that. Yes. every And you know what? I always say, like, before I used to, like, it would just be, like, everything the client's giving me. And then I had to learn, no matter how much money you have, everyone has a budget. Mm-hmm. So we got to know what the budget is. We need to be responsible adults. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> as hard as it is. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Brittany. You guys can always play with my Twitter or stroke my IG at Spicy Mati. Go to thespicylife.com. Click and subscribe to the Spicy Life podcast. Share this episode with a friend. And there you guys have it. You have just been spiced. The Spicy Life